Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill, this is my shop. We're working on an LBSC Titch locomotive. And in this week's episode, we'll go extensively into making the little valve rods. And we also will show cutting some gaskets, putting them in place, and finally bolting the cylinders into the frame, the chassis itself. So you can see they're in place. There was a little bit of a fitting issue with the brake assembly so I covered how I, f I finished that and solved that problem. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Making the little valve rods was fun. It was uh, another creative and interesting project and I think it'll be useful to you if you're going to endeavor a project like this. So sit back, relax, enjoy. Check out the uh, various segments in this episode. It should run about 20 minutes or so, 20-25 minutes total. And we're uh, making progress, getting ready to run on air. And um, next week we'll we'll be talking about the guide bars and setting the putting the valve rods in place, setting the valves, and making one step closer to running on air. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you. Please give me a thumbs up, just uh, or make a comment. It's always encouraging to me to have those comments in there. To know that people are listening and are watching and enjoying what I'm producing. So. Appreciate that. I hope this is useful to you. And again, have a great week. Thanks, everybody. That's the part I need to make, and it'll be pretty much it to set things up for the running on air, except, of course, the piping is the valve rod, and that connects from the, the back of the valve here, this little clevis, to the actuating rod that we made very early on when we made the slip eccentrics and all those things. So it's an interesting part. It's made of eighth inch steel, eighth inch by quarter inch steel, and it's bent at an offset. And I found it an interesting thing. I wanted to show this again. I always draw things out and I read the directions. LBSC shows the as, the as complete part with the two eighth inch holes to be two inches on center. And he, he describes in the book, that's the finished um, dimension rather, he describes in the book that when you lay it out flat to just make them make the, them about two and an eighth inches on center and then it's um offset by a fraction he gives the fraction in the book I even forget what it is now something like 11 30 seconds or something uh, getting ready to make the next part and probably the last sort of major thing before the piping stuff to get it ready, ready to run on air is the valve rod that's on page 85. Interesting, it's the, the eighth inch holes are two inches apart finished and there's a 1932nd offset which head to the math on it's 0.593 and so what I did was I, I drew the part out <clears throat> and I read the book. LBSC says the finished dimension is two inches off center or yeah, two inches on center for the holes, but there is this offset. And so he, what he says is to do is to lay it out with the holes two and an eighth inch on center, and then put the bend in, just kind of like it shows. Interesting thing, I did the math on the on the bend, and well, because I was laying this out, I used quarter inch grid square paper. Then I, I thought, well, and I did it to make it large enough to, to be able to draw out and think about, I basically did it as one square is an eighth of an inch. And I did, when I was doing the offset, I thought, I wonder how many eighths of an inch go into the 0.593. So I did the math, it's four and, and three quarter eighths, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It made it easy to draw out, and that's the reason I did it. So I'll keep that in mind when I actually do the bending offset. But I've laid that out, and I think what I'll do first before I make it, I've got some eighth inch by half inch hot rolled steel that I made the, uh, that's the same stuff I made the connecting rods out of originally here. Um, so I'll probably use that again. And one thing I can do is use this, this is a the uh, failed brake bar, if you remember, if you saw that episode where I was trying to thread this part here, or actually just turn it to, diameter and I got a little too aggressive and bent it. Well, I saved the scrap and it's an eighth inch thick by a quarter inch and by about three inches long so I'll be able to lay it out put the holes in it 
and and do the bend and double kind of double check LBSC's directions just using the scrap piece and before I make my finished parts. The other thing that I got to doing is taking everything apart. Um, I rub the cylinder tops because this is where the valves will, will slide again. So I rub this on some 400 grit sandpaper with WD-40 as a lubricant in a figure eight pattern to get it super smooth. I did that on my um, granite surface plate that I have. And um, kind of uh, I set these uh, the guide bars in so I can mark and drill them. And also I need to make gaskets. I haven't done that yet. So I found, I, ha I pulled out my old set and I have some 16th inch gasket material that I used before on my Allen Mogul. But that's too thick. So what I needed was some, actually this is, a, I said 16th, it's, it's 1 32nd of an inch and it's rubberized, it's really good gasket material, but also what I need is the 164th inch, which I found at, in the States here, I found it at O'Reilly Auto Parts in town. Felpro makes it, and I've used this kind of material before. I had an antique pickup truck that I used, I, I used to make my own gaskets all the time, so I'm familiar with it, it's really good stuff, and it was, I wanna say six or seven dollars. I also laid out some of the other parts the guide bar brackets, the pistons, the oil pump. So the stuff that I'm, I'll need to mount together as I get it ready for running on air. And I bought a brand new craft knife. I have this one, exacto knife that I've had forever, but the blade is kind of dull. So I went to Home Depot on the way home from work today and I got this for $6 just to have. Um, I won't probably go into a lot of detail about making the gaskets because other people have already done that. Joe Pye's got some good videos about making gaskets, as does Keith Appleton. So check those out. I'll, I'll show a little bit, but I'm not going to go into detail about it. So just getting ready for the next phase, and I'll keep you right, using what was left, a little scrap piece. I just uh, cut it off to the right length and drilled a couple of eighth inch holes in it, an eighth inch in from the end. I made the bends. It looks like it's about using my little protractor here about a 25 degree angle so i shot for that i just bent it in the vise tapped it with a ball peen hammer and it looks like i got the angle about right so that's another another nice thing about using graph paper is you can kind of roughly check like that so i've also just mocked up the cylinder and the steam chest in place and the part in question will need to go in between these two pieces. So let me set the camera down and put that in there and see how that works. Hey, hey, I think that will work. So this is just the piece I just, all I did was, <clears throat> excuse me, take it and install it. And I had to deburr the holes a little bit, but um, it's kind of cool. You can see the action here. Let me see. So you can see the valve moving back and forth. Obviously it's going to move a lot more as the eccentric goes around. But the eccentrics are, are kind of loose on there, so they move a little bit. Let me see. Oh, it's not, a, not a lot of runway here. but um, Anyway, the, the fit is very good, so I'm very happy about that. I'll just make a couple of good ones, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, there's the finished valve rods. They came out okay, not perfect. Um, this one, sadly, when I was bandsawing, I just removed too much material there, and that's why it looks a little odd. It won't affect the operation because even, as you can see, even that square, square ended one that I made um, <laughs> does the job. So I'm just going to deburr a little bit more, file those things up, and then I'll bend them. Okay, the parts have been cleaned up a little bit, filed, deburred, and um, I used a countersink just to go over the holes. Everything's fine there, and I, I removed the the test piece from that spot. There's this little fasteners, and a mark at a half inch for the bends. So now all that remains is to bend these two little rods, and we'll be finished. I'm sure folks know how to bend stuff, but I just wanted to show my little setup. I put a little brass there to protect it, and I've got an aluminum block in the back, and I'm using my really giant vise. And well, I just I bend it, and I tap it in with a ball peen hammer, and then I just check make sure it matches. That's the whole purpose of making a test piece was uh, 
so I can just visually verify like that. And for tapping, I mean, I tap it with the ball peen hammer. Just take it really easy, and especially these these uh, are thinner rods than the test piece was. So now I'll take this out, reverse it, and put the opposite flare in it or bend. And just a second later, uh, yeah, the, I guess the other big consideration is keeping it level because you want your bends, you you want the holes to be on the same plane, basically. Not that it's hugely critical, but it's nice to have a test piece to look at and say, oh, yep, got the bends in the right place and the right angles, and off we go. All right, now to make the actual rods, valve rods, I've got a piece, I cleaned up a piece of this eighth inch by half inch hot rolled steel. As you can see, I've laid out where the circles will be, and before I, I'll, I'll basically do like a rip cut, but and then a cross cut. I almost did the cross cut first, but I realized I'm, I wouldn't have much to hold on to if I did that. So I'll uh, I'll narrow it down first, and then cut it off here because I'm thinking about sorry, thinking about machining it in one piece. On the valve rods again. Here we are back at the mill using my. This is the very same piece of box aluminum that I had before. A lot simpler task this time is just to make two barbell shaped pieces of steel. So right now I'm just going to cut the insides, um, do it all, do them both at once, and um, I've already laid them out. And what I did was I drilled a number 38 hole through here. I crazy glued the stock to the aluminum, drilled a number third center drill, drilled a number 38 hole all the way through. Then I used an eighth inch drill to do make a clearance hole through the steel part. And um, and from that point, then I was able to just uh, tap the aluminum for the uh, 832, or the 540 screws, excuse me. A storm raging outside, but so here's our two little blanks. Be interesting to see how they clean up. They're a little bit thinner than 3 three sixteenths, but I think there's plenty of material there. Probably about 10 thou too thin, but it just seemed to look better that way, so. I went ahead and machined them down. Here's the blanks. I, I just kept it screwed to the block well. I cut it on the bandsaw over there. It's a lot safer to just hold the block. I did the same thing over here on the other ones. So now I can unscrew it, and if I got it hot enough, the uh, crazy glue will have melted. And if I didn't get it hot enough, then I'll have to heat it up with the heat gun to unstick it. And then I can just bandsaw or belt sand it to the little dog bone shape and then bend them. So, let's see about that. I'm just going to do them freehand. I'll do the little barbell ends freehand on the belt sander. Okay, it's been a fun weekend of working on the different pieces and getting the fitting fits correct for the getting ready for the next stage. But before I can go on with the trial assembly, it's time to make gaskets. So I did find this... 164th inch gasket material at O'Reilly Auto Parts and um, is only about seven dollars for a roll of one more than I'll need. So just to, I'm going to make them one at a time obviously for the front and rear gaskets. So I made a little fixture and the first step is to cut a, a little piece out. It's about, it's more than enough the right size. Then I've just been pressing it in with my thumbnail here and make a little outline. And I can cut it out with the X-Acto knife, cut it out nice and clean for the centerpiece, and then put the actual um, cover on here, clamp it down with these washers, and then drill the holes, and I should be all set. I'll bring you along for, I'll cut the, cut the centerpiece next and bring you on for the, the drilling, show you what that looks like. Sure is a pleasure using a brand new blade and an X-Acto knife, a luxury I didn't have when I was a kid building plastic models in the basement but um anyway <laughs> so i set the set the paper in place on my little jig and clamped it down had to remove one of the screws so that i could set it this way this is a nice piece of plastic material that i have in the shop and use for stuff like this use it as a little backstop trace the inside here's the piece that got cut out and uh, when it was done then i flipped it over and just cleaned out the inside of it so we're good to go now. This will be a perfect fit for this 
in or off to remove these screws though I can set and clamp this thing down I'll show you how that works here we are all set in the jig clamp down ready to go I'll drill those holes tomorrow night it's getting a little late tonight but I'll be able to cut four of those and do those in short order then I need to make two sets of gaskets each one for sealing the steam chest to the cylinder and one for sealing the top of the steam chest to the cover plate so that'll be a fun thing too okay I used the pillar tool that's in its new location to drill the holes here through the gasket material and now all I gotta do is cut around it and uh, one of them will be done so I can show you the just drilled into the aluminum a little bit there okay there's the completed gasket came out really good really simple to make and now I'll go ahead and screw this one onto the left side and uh, make the other one make the other rear gasket same process first one of the rear sides is done so this is the right side don't know why but I'm just cutting out the outside it just looks cool just had to take a quick video of it. okay here I am part way through making the the gaskets for these steam chests as you can see I've got the 10 holes drilled here two of the smaller ones eight of the larger ones using eighth inch drills and then the smaller drills for the other size but what I've done is I cut out two blanks so to speak and I just used some painters tape to tape them together to the bottom of the thing and I use that as my template to drill the holes into a nice block of wood and that gives me a nice clean hole here for the most part and um, so I'll take these off and then I'll have to cut the center out and then I'll, I'll do the final fitting I'll show you that in a second okay here's the uh, gaskets with the holes drilled and the centers cut out I just use this little exacto knife with a brand new blade on it and ooh, look at that I did not realize I got that edge that close it should seal but it's not a very good job of it so let me test fit it on on the cylinder in a minute I'll show you that okay here's the the gasket this is the better of the two test fitted on the studs I haven't pushed it all the way down yet but you can see it fits nicely it'll be perfect in its place decided to scrap this ill gasket here and make another one because the paper's cheap so cut a full size a little bit oversized blank taped it in drilled the holes now I'll cut the inside out and test fit it. okay it only took a couple of minutes to remake this new gasket for the steam chest and uh, let me put the cover on that's good it's gonna be nice I trimmed it already on the outside there so I think we're good to go slowly but surely working our way towards assembling and placing and then ba basically just test fitting everything that you see here yes just started to try to put things together here to do some more test fitting and I realized I wanted to show you something that <clears throat> the brakes as I originally created them the uh, back part of these brake shoes was interfering with the rear part of the, the rear cylinder covers. I can show you maybe pretty well on this one over here. I started to take it apart. But you can see right there. Um, well, I don't know if you can tell or not. But I had it had the uh, cylinder all tightened up with these screws, these four, 540 screws, <clears throat> and the dang thing was it was slam up there. The brake shoe was slam slam up. So I'm taking it apart so I can grind some off the back of the ears of the brake shoe and hopefully create enough fit. I'll show you how that works out. As you can see, I got the chassis supported on a couple of old ammo cans here. Makes it a lot easier to work on while it's up in the air. Looking accommodations for the brake hangers, you can see this little bit of Sharpie marker here and where I've removed that screw. I just tried this on the opposite side and it worked out okay. Put the cylinder in a vise and I've just filed down this part of the rear cover down to about half its thickness and I also used a smaller screw I ground down the head a little bit and I, I dished out with a Dremel tool I dished out the area for the screw head so worked okay on the other side there's barely enough room to do it I'm going to do it on this side too and I'll show you the results there you may or may not have this problem if you're building a titch but uh, you know it's a little tight cramped quarters so 
making an accommodation is not a big deal. All right, here you can see how I filed it down, how much lower this screw head is compared to the others. So it, I did gain additional clearance there. I did exactly the same thing on the other side, filed it down, then I used a Dremel to round out a little bit of extra space. And as you can see, I touched the head of the screw on the belt sander just to flatten out the dish a little bit. And uh, let's see, on this side, you probably can't see it in this light, but there's just barely enough room for it all to fit. I was going to try to hold up and mock up the cylinder. You can. This is the part that, where, sorry, where the interference lies in the back of the brake shoe. So <clears throat> you can see the Sharpie marker on that. I unscrewed this and I, I ground the back of the brake shoe down so that it doesn't stick out any further than the brake hanger. And let's see if you can see, let me line up the holes basically here. And you can see it's just, I'll put the screws in in just a second. There's not a lot of excess clearance there, but as long as the, as long as this is not smashing against the, uh, the uh, brake hanger when it's in place, then, and the brake hanger can move freely. There you go. You can, if y'all can see that there's like just a wee bit of clearance there. I might actually file that screw head down just a little bit. It's almost like a zigzag shape there. Just barely a little bit, just enough. So that's what I'm talking about. I'll, I'm gonna screw it in and see how it fits. And if not, if it's still tight, I'll make some more adjustments. All right, there is just enough clearance. I was thinking the best way I could illustrate the clearance is by putting, there's a little 3 thousandths brass shim and you can see I can just stick it in. If you look at the upper portion up here, the shim, let me move it around so you can see where it's going. Anyway, it just, just barely enough clearance. There's probably maybe more like five or 10 thou total clearance there. You can see it between that back screw head and the back of the hanger. And most importantly, you, I can just, you can see I can jiggle the hanger around and it's not binding obviously. And the same thing for the other side. So there's your remedy and I'm pretty excited about that. All right, we'll just make this the last segment now that we've got the cylinders firmly in place on both sides and we have clearance for the brake assemblies. Next week, we'll talk about mounting the guide bars in place with the little brackets that we made and connecting the valve rods in place. We know they fit, but getting that all set in place, getting the connecting rods, there's the mounting brackets, the other valve rod, the other guide bar. So we'll talk about fitting all that stuff together, checking for clearances, and getting it one step closer to getting it ready to run on air. Speaking of running on air, here's some of the castings that I'll be me I'll be machining for the T's, for the exhaust, and the intake. So looking forward to that fun project. Thanks again, everybody. Hope you have a great week.